No problem here. Wonderful. So this is okay. going to be recorded and we can then upload it and it will be awesome for all the people who can't make it today. So what we'll do is just a very quick round of introductions um, followed by, so does everyone, has everyone seen the agenda? If it's the same then in your email. It's the same as in my email. Um, oh, bless you, Philip, who just pasted it into the, into the chat. So we'll do a round uh, introduction. Although I think many of us know each other, there are at least two people here. Oh, here's Merrily also joining. Um, we're just going to do a round of introduction, and um, so everyone knows everyone, and then we'll um, we'll get on with, with actual updates and discussions. So uh, from left to right, I'll go. Merrily, you're the first one. I just got here, what am I supposed to do? Just introduce yourself very briefly and say <laughs> hi to everyone. Hi everybody, I'm Marilee and I am the co-chair of the Wikimedia and Libraries User Group. Happy to be here. Yes, we're happy that you're here actually. Um, Wikipedia and education, Wikipedia and libraries are having so many things in common that it's, it's really great that you are here. Um, next is Philip. Hi, I'm Philip from Wikimedia Serbia. I'm a board member of the user group and I'm currently eating cherries, so yay. Oh, good for you. <laughs> okay. Um, Sravant? Hello, uh, I'm user Nagsai Sravant from BBIT Wiki Connect, and I'm currently pursuing my third year BTEC in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. Awesome. Uh, uh, Savant, can you um, come closer to the mic so we can hear you better? You sound really, really far away. Oh, sure. Oh, better. Awesome. And next is Nivas. Am I audible? We can't hear you, Nivas. Oh. Hello, am I audible? Nivas? Okay, we'll try to come back to you and try to sort out the, the audio thing. Uh, Andy, you're next. Hello everyone, Andy Babbitt. I'm user of Pigs on the Wing, talking to you from Birmingham in England. Uh, my exciting news is I have a new job as Wikimedian in residence at Coventry University, which is uh, the next city to Birmingham, so not too far to commute. Um, I have a little experience of using Wikipedia in education. I've taught on a number of university programs where, as an invited guest where I've gone in and taught people to edit Wikipedia. But with my new role, I'm going to be much more involved in designing curriculum adaptations to involve the use of Wikipedia and its sister projects uh, from the ground up, as you might say, rather than simply being parachuted in to do the teaching. I'll sh shortly share a, a link to a blog post which explains a little bit more about the role. Hello, everyone. Oh, Andy, great that you're here and congratulations on the new um, position. I think you're um, one of uh, just a bunch in the world who are Wikimedians in residence in um, academic institutions. We have just a few of them. So it's great to make the pool larger and we look forward to working with you as well. Liana, you're next. Okay, hi everyone. I am Leanna Davis. I'm the Chief Programs Officer at the Wiki Education Foundation, which runs the education program in the United States and Canada. Um, I apologize for having my name say Wiki Education. This is our uh, group uh, Zoom account, and so I can't change it without kicking us all out of the meeting. So um, you just have to know it's me. Yeah, and thanks again for hosting us. And Garyon, you are next. Hello, my name is uh, Gerion. I'm from Germany, uh, and I'm in Germany right now. Uh, in the last weeks, uh, well, I'm working for the Wikimedia Foundation as strategy liaison for Germany and Netherlands, and in the last weeks, I've been facilitating strategy salons. Uh, two weeks ago, I held um, several um, um, 
Wikipedia schoolings for new users at the General Summit of Wikimedia Germany. Um, and uh, I was invited uh, just a few weeks ago to uh, make a series of uh, Wikipedia workshop at the German uh, Bundestag in Berlin, which is like the German government. Um, and uh, last week I had a booth um, for Wikipedia on the uh, Kirchentag, which is a, uh, it's a church festival of the Protestant church with 130,000 attendants. Um, was quite interested. And, uh, and in other news is on 15th of November, I'll be teaching Wikipedia at the, what's called here Volkshochschule, which is like, um, like a secondary school for uh, grown ups um, in Dusseldorf. Okay, that's what's so, happening. Sorry, did you say a secondary school for grown-ups? Um, no, it's it's a sort of um, it's it's a it's it's a school owned by the cities that offer several courses that all um, citizens can attend, like learning languages or political science or whatever. Uh, it's mainly oh, awesome. uh, one week or three months courses in the evening or. Um, it, it does, it's not very expensive. Uh, it's a general public school for uh, people that work or for retired people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Nivas, uh, do you want to give us an, uh, another try from your new user? We can't hear you. Like, we, I can hear that you speak, but we can't really hear you. So, one minute. Oh, this is actually better. Nope. So, so am I audible now? Oh yeah, just uh, speak louder if you can. Yeah, fine. So my name is Nivas and I am from VVIT Vika Connect Club. So I am pursuing my final year in the undergrad section, so in ECE. So I am representing on behalf of Krishna Chaitanya Velaga. Hello? Yes, yes, we're here. Yeah. Well, you'll be presenting, you're one of our featured speakers for today, just because Krishna, um, who's one of our board members also uh, in the user group, couldn't be here today. He's very sick. So yes. Nivas is going <clears> to <throat> tell the story of that school project um, instead of him. Uh, Nivas, if you can find a way to even speak louder, that would be awesome. Okay, uh, I'll try. Oh, that's, that's better. Actually. Yes. Okay. I'll so do. we'll do some some short updates and then go to the featured speakers, which is you and Liana, um, and we're looking forward to to learning from your experiences. So in terms of updates, um, actually, Philip, do you want to do the the general update from the user group? Um, I'm I'm writing notes right now, so maybe okay. you could do it. Yeah, I can do it. And thanks for taking notes. Sure. Um. So what's up with the user group? Uh, we have been focusing in the past month on Wikimania. Um, as some of you know, we are um, the space leaders for the education space in this year's Wikimania. Um, <clears throat> we are, we've actually created a committee, a content committee. Um, so it's not just a user group. So we have a few people from the user group, but also representatives from um, the education team at the Wikimedia Foundation. And we have a few more volunteers um, just from the, you know, from the general Wiki and education community who wanted to help. So all of us are kind of working together to create the program. And I'm hoping that um, uh, we will have some, some initial drafts uh, by the end of the month. So um, yeah, how many of you, by the way, are coming to Wikimania? I I am. I will be at Wikimania and at the pre-conference. Although I haven't decided yet what to do at the pre-conference, but I'll be there. Okay. Mary Lee will be there, hopefully. Um, yeah, Liana will miss you, but uh, hopefully there are going to be some other representatives from Wikian. 
Yeah, my colleague Ryan McGrady will be there and Frank Schulenberg will be there from Wiki Education. Mm, yes, and uh, we, we will be trying to uh, feature you at least in one panel from afar. Hopefully it's going to work for us. Yes. Um, oh, and Andy, you're also not going to be in Wikimania this year. Uh, we'll miss you too. Uh, Nivas, what about you? And Sravant, will you be there? Uh, no, uh, I'm not able to attend. Okay. Okay, um, so most of our work has been around Wikime Wikimania, but uh, we've also um, starting to, we're now also starting to go back to the working groups uh, issue. We've also, we're also involved in, so some of you have heard about the Greenhouse, which is something, it's a project for helping new um, new editors just starting out with Wikipedia in education or Wikimedia in education rather. And it's something that the um, education team at the Wikimedia Foundation is working on, but the user group has been quite involved in that. And we're working together on exploring how we can help new uh, newcomers to, you know, help them either with the online course or by reviewing submissions, etc. cetera. Um, other than that, um, I don't know how many of you know about the idea of the working groups that we had, but um, Philip, do you think that you can find our link to the to the working groups from our meta page? Yeah, just a sec. Okay, so Philip is going to um, send a link. Oh, here it is. It, it didn't take even a minute, so <laughs> here it is now. It, you're really quick. So there are a few uh, working groups that we thought to kind of start connecting to key areas that we think the user group should be invested in. Um, and one of them has been tech infrastructure. So just a reminder to those who are here for the first time or may not know um, why this user group was created. So the first, I would say, one of the main issues that brought us together are um, certain technical, technological infrastructure uh, that we feel that we need globally to do our work. And we didn't see those needs met. And at that time, the education team at the WMF was not really functioning. Um, and, and so we kind of grouped to, to make sure that we represent what's happening around the world uh, with the hopes of joining forces and making sure that the needs that we don't necessarily have locally, but rather globally, uh, are met. So the main focus of the user group is to kind of attend to these joint needs that we all have. Um, and one of them is tech, the tech infrastructure. So we kind of put this aside for a few months because there's been there's been discussions at the WMF about a new tool that, that does um, uh, statistics and other metrics and there's also the the dashboard but no one is really developing it um, so the user group is now trying to get back involved in that and see what we can do to make things better so for that end we kind of understood to, that we need to do some kind of research uh, to see uh, what is actually needed around the world, uh, what are the needs that are still not met technologically. And so we are hoping to um, create a survey that will go out to the community pretty soon. And we wanted to invite all of you who, who care about the infrastructure that we use um, to, to kind of you know, join this working group and help us create a survey and help spread it uh, through your communities so we can have as much feedback as we can. The research, uh, again, in collaboration with the education team at the foundation, will be used to, to um, pursue grant requests. Oh, hi, Selesh. Um, and um, hopefully, make sure that whatever is needed is developed, gets developed in the, in the coming year. So whoever's interested, go sign up for the 
um, tech um, for the tech group, uh, and we will contact you soon. Any questions about that before we move on to the more interesting parts of the meeting? Awesome. Sailesh, do you want to say hi to everyone? We, we finished a round of introductions and I was just updating them about what we've been up to. Sailesh? Okay, so Sailesh is here representing the uh, Wikimedia Foundation education team. Um, I don't know why he's unable to speak right now, but know that he's here. Um, if you don't have any questions about the working groups or getting involved with this, can I ask how many of you are using the um, Wikipedia and education dashboard, the programs and events dashboard? None of you? Hello? We are using it. <laughs> Nivas, you're using it? Yeah, we are using it. Okay. Merrily, what about you? Have you been running any library workshop using using the dashboard? Um, not not me specifically, but I do know in our user group we had a um, we are mimicking you in that we're trying to have monthly meetings um, as well, and uh, it came up. Um, that uh, institutions really want to use the dashboard in conjunction with one live one ref. Um, yeah. So not me personally, but I know in the user group, there's a lot of interest in it. Okay. Andy, uh, yeah. have you been using it in your, in your sessions, in your uh, workshops? Um, uh, we used it in Milan last year, although it wasn't me who drove it. It was one of the local Wikimedians who, who stepped up to do that. I'm mm -hmm. hoping to do it again next week when I'm there. Uh, and I'm certainly going to consider using it in Coventry, but there are a couple of questions uh, I need to satisfy to make sure that it meets Coventry's requirements. One is around GDPR. I'm fairly confident that there won't be a problem, but we just need to get everything, um, mm. you know, get all the boxes ticked before we can use it. Yeah. Um, what about you, Garen? Have you been using the dashboard? Uh, no, never. Never. I don't even know what it is. You don't know what it is. So this is a tool. Uh, can someone link it in the in the chat? This is a tool that help us track if we do trainings or if we are um, doing a course or a, any type of really gathering. So people have been using the dashboard not only for educational purposes, but also to run campaigns, to run um, workshops to run um, a variety of activities, not only in Wikipedia. And it helps us to track specific users. So you can open a course or an event, right? Uh, that's why it's called the Programs and Events Dashboard. And you can send a link to people in your course or in your workshop for them to sign up. And then you have the list of their usernames so you can track what they're doing. It gives you nice statistics, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can do all sorts of things. I mean, it's not a dashboard uh, presentation right now, but uh, basically it's, it's quite essential when you do a lot of education work and you kind of want to know what your impact is. Um, it's quite essential. And I should say that the programs and events dashboard is an adaptation of the original education dashboard invented by Wikied. Um, they have another version, maybe Liana can uh, describe it a bit, but their version is much more empowered than ours because uh, they have a very targeted, very specific way of running programs. It's for usually for higher education and they have all kinds of features that we um, don't have in the um, regular dashboard. Uh, Liana, do you want to say a few words before I continue? Sure, sure. So, um, so the history of the, the dashboard, it was originally a um, software tool that Wiki Education built specifically to sort of scale our programs. And I actually will talk about that a little bit in, in, my, in my talk coming up here. So, so that's a, it's a great segue to that. 
Um, mm -hmm. But we installed a version on WMS Labs um, because we recognized that this tool was something that would be really helpful for um, any kind of other program and events leader um, that's working. And so, you know, it works across all languages and all projects right now and tracks any edits that users that you are um, entering usernames for do. And we are, we, we are supporting a couple of um, outreachy and Google Summer of Code uh, interns this summer to work on developing a few features for the program and events dashboard. And one, um, as Marilee mentioned, was the one lib, one ref um, support. So um, there's a specific, I'm not sure, I think it's an, uh, I think it's an outreachy one, but it might be a Google Summer of Code um, project that's specifically around building out some features for the one Live one ref campaign within the the P and E dashboard, and we have somebody else who's working on um, better support for tracking cross wiki programs. So if you've got an event that people are working on, you know, multiple language Wikipedia is at, um, it'll help improve the workflow for that. And then we have another intern who's working on creating an Android app for the dashboard as well. That is awesome to know. And by the way, I didn't know that. So that shows you just a small part of the issue, uh, which is there's no way of, it's very hard to know who's working on what. Yes. There's no centralized, uh, no one is taking ownership really of the dashboard. And it's not like there are no needs from the community. So we're hoping that the research that we're gonna do with WMF education team as well as I should say it's not only the education team it's the whole programs all the partnerships and also GLAM sections um, we will also be involved in this because everyone is using the dashboard and we are hoping to hear from you what are some features that you're missing besides the one that are already uh, in development right now to see what's really missing for the people on the ground and hopefully we can apply for grants to make sure that those these things happen. So if you are interested in this type of work, um, please, please, please join the <clears throat> tech uh, working group so we can uh, have you think with us about all these issues and make sure that the features that you think are necessary um, get developed or get worked on. Um, yeah, so that's it in terms of um, <clears throat> really broadly updates. And this is cool because it's leaving much more time for us uh, to hear our featured speakers. So Liana, um, why don't we start with you? And I'll just say that Liana is, has chosen to talk uh, today about scaling an education program. So Liana, the stage is yours. Okay, let me see. Can you guys see this? My slides? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and all right, well now I've lost you. Well, I, I can move through it and <laughs> hopefully, hopefully this wouldn't be a problem. Um, I have lost my view of the chat. Um, since I have this in full screen. So um, if there's any questions or anything like that, just speak up rather than typing a question because I will not be able to see it while I'm talking. Um, so I think this is actually a, a, a great transition here. I wanted to kind of walk through a couple of slides of um, walking through kind of how we scaled our education program at the Wiki Education Foundation. And the dashboard plays a really big role in this. And so I have a specific tool that, um, that we use that I wanna kind of walk you guys through how we used it and then encourage you to use it if you are interested in scaling any of the work that you're doing as well. Um, it does not need to be higher education, although that is obviously how we used it in. Um, so I want to start by just kind of talking about what I mean by defining scaling here. Um, so this is a chart that shows the number of students that we're editing per academic year in our program. So the history of our program, for those of you who are unaware, is we started it back in 2010 when we were within the Wikimedia Foundation. And 
we had scaled it up a little bit, but the major issue was that um, the foundation was no longer interested in kind of focusing support on the US and Canada, um, understandably. And there was a lot of opportunity for this program that everybody recognized, but we knew that it wasn't going to um, succeed in growing within the bounds of the foundation. And so in 2014, we spun off into an independent nonprofit organization. Um, we are classified technically as a movement partner um, within the, the broader Wikimedia movement. And while we are also based in San Francisco, we operate completely independently from the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, we have our own board and our own staff. And so the, the yellow here that you see in this chart shows the growth that we've had since we spun out from the Wikimedia Foundation and we're able to kind of focus on growing the potential and sort of seize the opportunities of this program. So um, you can see we went from about 3,000 students a year to about 15 to 16,000 students a year, which is where we are now. So that's a pretty significant increase of, um, of growth of the program. And so I want to kind of walk you through, first off, why you would want to actually go through this scaling. Um, so the this chart here is a chart from the Wikimedia Foundation's metrics and activities meeting from a few months ago. Um, where they're talking about new editor sources for the English Wikipedia and the blue chart there is something, you, the, the blue line on the chart is something that you guys are probably a little bit more familiar with in the sense of it's the sort of um, chart that, you know, those of you who've been in the movement for a while have seen before. We had that large spike um, in 2007, 2006, 2007, and then the sort of uh, drop off of new editors. And this has been sort of the ongoing challenge that many of us have been working on. But this particular version of the chart picks up with what are the participants in our program in particular. They're the orange spikes there. And I'm really proud of this chart because you can really see the meaningful difference that um, Wiki Education's program participants are making. We are actually, in one month, you can see there, we actually brought in more new editors to the English Wikipedia than all other sources combined, um, which is a fairly impressive uh, statistic when you look at that. So we bring in 19% of all of English Wikipedia's new editors come in through wiki educations programs and then all other sources combined so all of the other edit-a-thons all of the random people um, clicking the edit button those kind of things represent 81 percent of the new editors that are coming uh -huh. into english uh -huh. wikipedia so this is i think what is really meaningful to me is the scaling means that you can have these major impacts on even big language wikipedias like english wikipedia and so you know i think the education program and the work that we all do is really critically important um, for the future of Wikipedia. Bringing newcomers in is critically important for all of us to continue um, having new content coming in and having existing uh, content get uh, um, adapted and improved over time and so you know the work that we do in outreach is really important and so I encourage everybody to approach this idea of scaling as how can we maximize our um, ability to bring in more newcomers and make the impact that we're having even greater. 19% um, of English Wikipedia is actually also 9% of all languages and all projects to give you context. So um, English Wikipedia is obviously by far the, the largest language Wikipedia, um, but in terms of just new users, that means that Wiki Education is bringing in 9% of all of the new users to all languages and all projects, which um, this is why scaling to me is so important is, you know, I've been with this program since 2010 and have sort of gotten to, to see this growth and been part of this growth. And this is something that I'm really proud of and that I would encourage sort of all of you to embrace the philosophy of, um, of increasing your impact by scaling your programs as well. Um, so I want to walk through a little bit of sort of how we did it here. 
Uh, so this is, an, and don't worry, I know you won't be able to read the specific details of this. Um, this is an activity that was called process mapping or that is called process mapping. And so the idea of process mapping is you start from, you, you pick your particular program and you pick a certain point in your program where you want to start and you pick a particular end point in your program that shows the impact that you want to have. And then you identify every single step between one that first point and the end point here so I'm gonna zoom in on this just a little bit so that you can see kind of what we did this was back in 2014 so we identified in the top um, line there what the process was so when in this particular instance of the process myth we started from the milestone of an instructor hears about teaching with Wikipedia right and then the second step was the instructor has contact with wiki ed and then the instructor receives training and then the instructor designs an assignment that works for Wikipedia. We mail brochures to the instructor based on a request. Students enroll in the course page, go through the online training. Students' questions about Wikipedia are answered. You can see the, the circle back of that um, because that's a cyclical thing where they ask more questions, we you know, answer more questions, those kind of things. Um, and then so for each step of the way here, what we did is we said, hey, could there be a technical solution to this problem, right? Where are the, you know, where, where are the bottlenecks right now? Where are the technical solutions that could, could, could come into place that we don't have right now? And where are things really just a human solution that we're always going to need to have somebody involved in um, as we scale this up? And then we identified the things that we are currently dependent on. Um, and so if you see in the sort of bottom right hand corner there, <laughs> we were dependent on the education program extension back in 2014. Um, for those of you who have been around in the education space for a while, you may remember this MediaWiki extension that we used for course pages back then. This predates the dashboard, um, which was a little bit of a challenge. Um, and so what we did is we color coded each of these uh, elements here based on which things we thought were pretty good and which things were needed work or where sort of our biggest bottlenecks were, right? So you can see the education program extension got a red box because we knew the foundation was interested in turning off the education program extension and that we would be in serious trouble if we lost that and didn't have any kind of uh, alternative to replace it with. And so with each step of kind of this process map, we color coded things based on how much of a current bottleneck it was to scaling, how challenging it would be to do, or how much our current dependencies were in trouble. And then we drew lot lines between the items to indicate sort of the circular nature of some of the elements. And this all led to our technical development roadmap. And so this process was really, really helpful in enabling us to identify what are the key features that we really want to achieve, right? Where are the, what, what is preventing us from scaling right now, right? Because sometimes it's really hard to see unless you're looking at the whole picture, you know, you can, you can easily identify what is your biggest pain point right now, but if you spend a lot of time working on that, is there some immediate next step pain point that you just haven't had, um, because there's been the initial bottleneck, you haven't realized that next step is also going to be a big pain point. Um, and so this process mapping tool was really effective in identifying for us where the various pain points are. Um, so I want to walk you through what it looks like from our side now. Um, so here's how we kind of bring people into the program, support them through. Um, here's all the sort of changes that we made to this based on um, this process mapping activity. So right now, we bring in people by attending academic association conferences. So this particular um, 
photo is from the Linguistic Society of America, who is one of our partner organizations. They give us a booth space in the exhibit hall at these academic association conferences. And um, I'm not sure how prevalent these are in your individual countries, but these serve as a really great opportunity for us to recruit people in um, because they'll give us often either a reduced cost or a free booth space. And so we just show up and talk to people um, and we're, we're amidst all the academic publishers um, trying to sell books and we're like, hey, we're here, we're Wikipedia, we want to help you uh, teach with Wikipedia and people get really excited about that. Um, so as we sit there at the booth and talk to people, what we do is we have this form on our website up and we just type in their first name, their last name, their university institution. We ask them for their email address and then we type notes about sort of what classes they teach or what kinds of assignments they might be interested in. And then we click the submit button. And what that does is that brings us to our Salesforce dashboard. Um, which is on the back end. So Salesforce is a CRM software, which is a, I think, constituent relationship management. And the idea behind a CRM software is you're able to have large numbers of people um, in the database, and then you're able to track information about them and um, what you've done with them, what engagement you've had with them, all of their contact information, all of that kind of thing. So we track everybody that we meet and everybody we work with in our Salesforce dashboard. And so um, this is, I've blurred out the names for privacy reasons here, but what you can see is that this is the, um, we met 61 people at this Linguistic Society of America conference in 2018, and we took all of their names and email addresses down. And then what we do is we create on our various office wiki a whole list of these are the days we're going to email these variety of people based on the different leads that we have. So we have about a thousand to two thousand names of instructors who we have met over the course of a variety of different events over the last several years and we are constantly before the start of a term um, in a sort of cycle of we're emailing this group this day this group this day this group this day etc to try to encourage more people to teach with wikipedia through our program um, once we've done that, what we're doing in all of these emails is we're just pushing people to our dashboard software. So when they log in as a instructor, they are walked through an assignment design wizard where they type in the information about their course, their, the course's title, the school, the term, the subject, the expected number of students. The course level, is it undergraduate, um, is it graduate student class, that kind of thing. And then we ask them, you know, what are your students doing on Wikipedia? Um, and then, you know, are they the instructor? Are they a teaching assistant, et cetera? And then we walk them through a series of questions. Um, and these questions are designed to be things that we give the faculty the flexibility to choose, but that they don't actually like none of the choices that they're making are going to be bad for Wikipedia. So for example, we don't give them the choice, you know, do you want your students to write argumentative essays or do you want your students to write encyclopedia articles, right? We, we just assign the students to write Wikipedia articles instead of argumentative essays. But we ask things like, will your students be working in groups or individually? And so this gives the participants in our program the flexibility to sort of craft an assignment that meets their learning objectives that they have for the course without having any kind of uh, assignments in there that are things that would not work well for Wikipedia. And so it creates a custom-based timeline based on the dates that they put in for the start and end date of their class and a variety of other things. And this produces the assignment that the students can then work on. So the students have an entire um, system whereby they get to go through a variety of trainings, um, this is what their timeline looks like. You can see um, the variety of trainings that they have to do and the exercises that they have to do. Um, it's broken down sort of week by week and 
um, and we walk through sort of each week that they have various assignments and what they have to do. And then there's a variety of also discussion prompts in here. So for example, what's a content gap? Um, now that you're thinking about what makes a good Wikipedia article, consider some additional questions. Um, and so we're able to put these sort of discussion elements into the timeline as well so that the students get a really meaningful learning experience out of it that the instructor might not think of. So the students go off, they write their Wikipedia article, they discuss things in class, and then while they're doing work, what we're doing is proactively monitoring the work that's happening on Wikipedia. And so we have a variety of alerts that we've built in um, for different things. So um, if an article gets nominated for deletion, for example, we have an articles for deletion alert that notifies us that we've got one of the student articles is in there. Or if a student says, clicks our I need help button, then, you know, we have a need help alert there. A productive course alert at the top is um, when a course has suddenly done a lot of content and we might want to take a look at what's going on in that class right now. Um, a first enrolled student alert is what happens when obviously the first student enrolls. So that's a good indication that we might want to pay attention to this class because it looks like uh, students are starting to get active. And then a GA nomination alert is when the student nominates an article for good article. And those are, this is kind of the stuff that we've built in here of what are the activities that happen on Wiki that we as program managers are going to want to pay attention to because when we've got we have 8,000 students simultaneously editing each term. And so we are not able to physically monitor everything every student is doing. And so we use this tool built in on the back end of, um, of our, our dashboard to be able to sort of monitor this stuff. And so for those of you who are working on the program and events dashboard, this also is active for you too. Um, that if you go to slash alerts on your um, course page, you'll be able to see this alert as well. Um, I know the art and feminism user group uh, or uh, edit-a-thon group tends to use this pretty extensively when they are um, doing stuff. If this is not active yet for the language that you're working on and your language uses a variety of categories to tag things, that's how we've built this, right? Of if an article gets nominated for deletion, it gets put into a particular category on Wikipedia. And so that's sort of what is happening on the back end to create these tags for us. Um, we can build this easily for your language Wikipedia too. You just need to let us know what alert you want it to be called and what category that's associated with. So then if there's an article that's being worked on by a student in one of your courses that is um, gets put into this category, then this, uh, this alert will pop up on the alerts field. So then we also have, this is a screenshot from our Salesforce instance again. So what also happens is the dashboard speaks to our Salesforce. And so what it does is it pulls in information around, you know, what are the participants? How many articles did they edit? How many edits did they make? How many words did they add? How many uploads to comments did they have? Um, you know, it, all of the due dates and things like that. And so this enables us to be able to, um, to, to monitor sort of the work that's been going on in the classes through our Salesforce as well. And then when we close out each one of these courses, this is our sort of key to continuing our scaling work. When we close out any of these courses, what we do is we do a um, both the quantitative information of the words per participant um, and then we do a qualitative rating as well. So you can see down there's the quality. And so we have a four step quality um, assessment, which is excellent, good, fair, and hurts Wikipedia. Um, and then we have a time investment rating of high, medium, or low. And so the idea behind this is we are able to then have the staff who is working to support each one of these classes and decide generally how well the students did in terms of content on Wikipedia and how much work the course was. And then each of those 
numbers as well as the words per participant and if they had any, for example, plagiarism incidents or things like that, all get calculated by Salesforce into creating a course rating where we rank whether the class is a high, mid, or a low class. So here's the breakdown um, of our last year. We had 23% of our, um, our classes got rated high classes. So those are the ones where the faculty does a really great job. We don't put in a lot of time. The students do excellent work. And so we're, we want to focus on retaining those instructors. And so we spend the bulk of our work um, in the retention realm, realm trying to bring those faculty back to teach with Wikipedia again. Uh, and then 65% were in the mid-level, which is um, they did good work, they may, might have taken a little bit of time, or they had one student that plagiarized or something like that, and we're happy to have them back again, but we're not going to spend a lot of time um, engaging with them. And then about 5%, this has been maintained across all um, terms that we've done this, about 5% of the people say they're going to do it and then never end up actually doing the assignment. And then about 6% have what we um, rank as a low class. And so these classes have significant problems either in terms of the quality of content they had in Wikipedia, they had a couple of students that just edit Ward or, um, you know, ended up causing a lot of problem. And so for each of these low rated classes, what we do is we do an individual assessment of is this class something that we want to work with again because we think this problem is fixable, right? Like, you know, did this professor just have a, an off term of a bunch of bad students or was this actually uh, the the students were you know the professor wanted students to write essays and was really upset when you know we told them no they have to write encyclopedia articles instead right and so we decide whether it's something that's fixable or not and then we'll work with the professor again if we think it's fixable and we and they're amenable to working with us to fix it and if not then we mutually agree to part ways and they don't teach with Wikipedia again and so sort of through this system, that's how we've been able to scale the, the work that we've been doing. We've built all these technical um, systems. And so we started back in sort of the 2014, 2015 time. We had three full-time staff that were working on this program um, to support the, the 5,000 students. And we still have only three full-time staff working on it to support the 16,000 students now, um, which is a really great way for us of demonstrating that um, these technical tools and building out processes and systems and things like that are really great at enabling you to scale even if you don't have more resources in terms of, of human time to be able to um, to grow. So I really, really support this process mapping activity and I strongly encourage all of you guys to engage in it. Um, so I have a worksheet that you can use for process mapping yourself. Um, it's on Commons. It's file process map worksheet education program PDF. Um, and so I definitely encourage you to take a look. I, I will, once I get out of this, um, I will also post a link to it in the chat here. Um, once I get out of the, the slide deck so, so you guys can pull it up as well. But I found this to be really, really helpful. Um, and I strongly encourage all of you to engage in it as well as you um, start looking into kind of your scaling activities. Um, and that is it for what I have prepared to talk about, but I'm happy to have questions either now or um, I, if you want to digest this a little bit and have other questions, feel free to reach out to me either on Wikipedia or at my email address, which is Leanna at wikiedu.org. Um, and my username is user Leanna Wikied. Any questions? Thank you so much, Liana. This was awesome. Can we see your lovely face again? <laughs> um, let me find my mouse appears to have disappeared. Um, so that would be a good question. Let me see. Did that? Okay, stop share. Okay. Awesome. So do we have any questions to Liana? You're all shocked from what you've heard. <laughs> Come on, don't be shy. Um, you yeah, just, just one quick question. 
uh, the assessment of the educators um, in, into four different groups, are they aware of their rating or uh, that you do that? That's a great question. Um, so I would say the, the did not do assignment are aware because they get a particular message around like, hey, it looks like you didn't actually do the Wikipedia assignment. Are you interested in doing, um, doing this, right? Again, next time. Um, and the low people are definitely aware because we reach out to them and say either, you know, hey, it looks like this isn't the right assignment for you. Let's not do this again. Or we reach out to them and say, hey, it looks like um, there's, you know, some things that we want to work on. You know, it looks like you might have had just a challenging student. What do you think? Are you willing to do this again? Like, here's what we would need to change if we want to do this again, that kind of thing. So I would say the low people are aware that they are grouped into low. Um, we did try a messaging of messaging the high people that they're, um, their students were sort of our, our highest rated and some people responded well to it but we um we we did a sort of a b test to see if they would um return at a higher rate and we didn't get any um difference in telling the high people they were high of uh, of any kind of meaningful higher retention from them so so we don't do that again um it's easier to just um give the same message to the high and the medium people and then um spend a little bit more time. We, we've learned that um, that the content of our messages when we reach out to people doesn't matter as much as the frequency with which we reach out to people. And so the more times you email people to encourage them to teach with Wikipedia, the more likely they are to actually teach with Wikipedia. And it doesn't actually matter what you say in the body of the message. Um, it just matters that you keep coming back to them and email them repeatedly. So. Any other questions? I have one actually about the alert system that you mentioned. Yes. Um, is there a place where we can see a list of the alerts that we can circulate during our survey? Because I think this would be something highly useful for the rest of the world. Um, yes. for programs everywhere. And if you're saying there's an easy way to adapt it to the programs and events dashboard, by all means, let's do it. Yeah, so I just pasted a link in here. This is the art and feminism one that they're using. And if you click on the drop down where it says campaigns alert, and then it has the, the ones they have selected as the, um, as the main ones they're using are articles for deletion and discretionary sanctions, which discretionary mm -hmm. sanctions is an alert where any time, this is an English Wikipedia thing, so I'm not sure if this is um, true on other languages, but if an article is under ARBCOM's discretionary sanctions and one of the users in the group um, edits it, we use this a lot if one of our students suddenly decides to edit an article that's under discretionary sanctions, we pay a little bit more attention to that. Um, and so um, it looks like Art and Feminism has selected those as sort of the default ones that they want. But if you click on that little drop down arrow, you can see what the various um, uh, alerts are. Awesome. This is a new thing. I don't know. I, I don't remember seeing this before. So thanks so much. We will definitely put it into the uh, into the survey because I think many people might who are using the dashboard might not know that it exists. Yes. Yeah. No. There's a, there's a lot of little um, tips and tricks with the um, uh, with okay. the dashboard that are really hard and not very well documented. And so I definitely I I myself signed up for the um, your little dashboard or your technical tools working group because I I know uh, documenting more of this stuff would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mary Lee, was there something that you wanted to ask as well? <clears throat> yeah, um, uh, this is maybe getting a little into the weeds, but um, can you talk about the support? So I know that there we have a, um, we, uh, there is a Summer of Code uh, uh, intern working on the um, one, on the hashtag mm -hmm. tool for one live one ref, and one of the so they put out the um, 
uh, that for comment. And the biggest comment that we got was that people want to see integration of the hashtag tool with the dashboard. Is that something that's in your um, summer of code or whatever uh, plans, or is this work that's going on? Um, I think so. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. I, I, I don't actually, so, so what I can do is I can paste the link to the fabricator here. This is what Sage um, sent me as this is what's happening with this particular with Kiyadi's, um, uh work um, for, I think it's Google Summer of Code. Um, so you can look through on this fabricator tag here of this is what Kiyadi is planning on doing. Okay. Cool. I have a different fabricator link, but that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the one the same is working on right now. So uh, right. There, there are also right. two different ones going on. I don't actually know. So this is, this okay. is you're, you're getting out of my area of expertise here. So <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Um, this is uh, this is as I mentioned earlier the. Um, the uh, finding out more about the dashboard is something that's of high interest to the libraries group. So all of the links that you shared are uh, super useful. Thank you. Great. And I'm glad that this was recorded. Yes, and, and Marily, please uh, circulate that we are looking for feedback. So if anything is missing for people, just like, just like you said about the one lib, one ref, um, hashtag thingy that is missing for people. If there are any other features, things that might help, things that you've seen someplace else, like the, <laughs> like Liana's dashboard, or you know any other idea that you have, this is the time to to let us know. Yep, and I can we, also send people off to the technical um, group. Yes, and we will circulate the survey at some point, and we we would love your your input as well. Okay, uh, we have one more person joining us, Armenoui. Hello? Okay. Um, still muted. We would love to, to know who you are and if you want to represent yourself just before we delve into the second presentation for today. Okay, not working. So. Uh, Nivas, uh, you are on. Yes, yes. But we can't hear you. You have to speak like, I don't know, connect to the mic better and we need to hear you. Yeah, am I audible now? Be better, yes, thank you. Yeah, okay, fine. So I'm going to share my, our presentation. Okay. So I'll just say that um, uh, Nivas is going to talk about retention and sustainability, um, and I let them do the presentation. And they are working in India, specifically where they'll tell us. So okay. So I am representing uh, Krishna Chaitanya Velga. So as he's not feeling well. So our club name is VVIT Wiki Connect, and VVIT Wiki Connect is a. I'm sorry. So this is a student-based organization in a college named Vasudev Venkatadri Institute of Technology. So uh, this club was actually founded by Krishna Chaitanya Velga, and we thought of bringing it in a form like club in the late 2017 and we started with a group of people named coordinators uh, in the year 2018. So our plan was actually funded by WMF through a rapid grant and partly by CISA2K as well. So CISA2K is a uh, organization named Center for, Internet and and Center for Internet and Society and A2K is Access to Knowledge Wing in CIS. So coming to the club activities, so we have conducted successfully two years of activities, that is 2017-18 academic year and 2018-19 academic year. So we, are, we have planned the academic year activities of 2019 and 20 as well. So right side you can see our club logo as well. And 
you can see the list of activities that we have did in the year 2017-18. So we conducted two editathons in English Wikipedia and one in Telugu Wikipedia. So we did a movement strategy salon 2030 and we did a photo walk along with an Wikidata editathon. So one minute. And next, um, so you can see the list of activities of 2018-19 economic year. So we did one live one live sessions, wiki awareness sessions, wiki data workshops, along with English Wikipedia training program, and few other like mini media wiki training, wiki dubbing project, and wiki experience service. We also participated in few thematic editathons, and. So these, these are the list of activities of 2019-20, which we are going to do in the coming academic year. So I will give a brief metrics of the activities of 2017-18. So you can see uh, our first Wikipedia editathon, we conducted it for two languages, that is English and Telugu. Telugu is our regional language. And we have participants of 66 people for English and 14 people for Telugu. And they have edited around 99 articles in English and 150 articles in Telugu. And they created one article in English and eight articles in Telugu. So we also conducted the second iteration of uh, Wikipedia Editathon. And the number of participants were 33. And they edited one out five articles and they created 10 articles. So what we did for the second editathon is we took the partic few participants of first editathon and we conduct uh, when we added few more new participants for this editathon. And why we did this is because uh, we thought of following retention more than content production. Nibis, we're we're losing your voice. Sorry. Okay, am I audible now? Can you come more closer to the mic? Okay, am I audible now? Better. Okay, so what we did was we took around 50% of participants from the first editathon and introduced and the 50 new participants to the second editathon and we conducted this particular second editathon because we thought of uh, focusing on retention more than the content production because uh, if there is no retention, we cannot get a quality editor base. So we felt this and we did this thing. And coming to Wikidata Editathon, uh, as you know that International Mother's Language Day is celebrated. So we thought of introducing Wikidata to students so that it is relatively easier than Wikipedia. And we introduced Wikidata during that uh, Editathon thing. And 267 items have been edited by the editors, and 30 new items have been created by them. So I'll start the activities of 2018-19. So we started our first. So our first activity of 2018-19 was Wiki Awareness Session. So why we conducted this session is. Most of the people in our college don't know what is Wikipedia and Wikipedia sister projects. And few people know what is Wikipedia and they don't know it is a volunteer thing that happens and everyone can edit. So we thought of introducing Wikipedia and Wikipedia sister projects. And we have given a better idea of what is Wikimedia movement. And we even said few things which happened in Wikipedia, what is the revolution that is going on. And then we conducted, uh, we took feedback from people and we asked them which is something they wanted to know. So what we came to know is they wanted to know what is Wikidata because most of the people now are training to machine learning and other things which requires data. So we have explained what is Wikidata and other things related to Wikidata. So they thought of knowing what is Wikidata and Wikipedia. 
so we conducted workshops on wikidata and a editing campaign on wikidata so we can um, our first workshop was conducted on 5th of july 2018 and we have number 31 participants and these all 31 participants are new to the workshop so no one is repeated and coming to the second wikidata workshop we have 29 participants out of which 14 participants were participants who were participants who participated in the first workshop because we thought of retention in this thing and yes we uh, we were able to retain five people from them and coming to the wikidata editing campaign so number uh, there were 13 participants in this particular campaign who were who have uh, attended the workshop 1 and workshop 2 and next uh, we did wiki data workshop 3 as well so there were 23 participants and we even introduced few participants from other colleges as well so next coming to wiki advanced training Uh, so, Nivas, can I ask a question before you move on to the advanced training? Yes, yes. Um, can you go back a slide? How did you like? What did you do to get people to come? No, no, the the one with the table. Yeah. The second one. Yes, yeah, second. this one. So, how did you invite people to come? You said that these were all new people. How did you reach out to people to come to the workshop? Oh, so we used this wiki awareness session thing so and we can uh, sent a google form to them like uh, answering so asking basic questions about what can wikipedia how can wikipedia serve people and other things and then we sorted few people and then we introduced them wiki data workshop uh, thank you is your question answered But partly <laughs> like oh. i i wanted pra- to pra- to practically understand like where did you do it like so, okay did you, okay did you use uh, facebook uh, did you put pamphlets uh, in the in the university like what did you do uh we have a social media for our college it is named as binder so we posted the message on binder and we went to each and every class telling that we are going to conduct an awareness session on a particular day of month okay so, thank you okay thanks so coming to wiki advanced training session so asaf bato the senior program officer for emerging communities visited india in the month of 2018 so he was actually going through few projects in india like uh, project tiger which was held at amritsar and wiki advanced training which was held at mumbai so during this we uh, took the help of ca c2k and conducted a two day advanced training workshop on 11th and 12th of december so we have 17 student leaders nivas nivas can you tell people what tiger uh, project tiger is because many don't know oh okay can i tell after completing this slide Yeah, yeah yeah of course yeah okay so there was 17 student editors out of which eight members sorry 17 members were the old people so like i meant to say that they have uh, participated in ed- uh, wiki data editathons 1 2 and 3 eh? and asaf introduced to various policies like neutral point of view and other advanced aspects like Uh, building queries in wikipedia using sparkql tabernacle wikipedia plus wiki data tools on google sheets and quick statements so coming to w- project tiger so uh, i'll once share the link so project uh 
uh, viewers, if you want, I can share about those projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll stop it. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, sorry, I was I joined late. Uh, I had some connectivity issue. Uh, so uh, I I was working with the CIS team almost uh, a month back. I have Ailesh, designed. we can't we can't hear you. You have to come closer to the mic. Uh, Shani, can you hear me now? Is it better? much better? Much better. Okay, thanks. So uh, I was working with the CIS team when the Project Tiger was happening. So Project Tiger is a collaboration between the uh, the between Google, Wikimedia Foundation, Wikimedia India, and the Center for Internet and Society. So they have all together, they want to increase the local language content uh, in Indic language Wikipedias. Uh, so not only with that, they also wanted to support the Indic Wikimedians with, in some, in, with some kind of infrastructure, infrastructural support by providing laptops to around 50 Wikimedians uh, and and left an internet connection to 50 Wikimedians as well. Uh, so there was a three months long editathon to encourage people to create articles in their in their local language Wikipedia. And as, so as a part of the editathon, like the community which creates most number of articles, uh, they they did a capacity building uh, training workshop. And which was done by Asaf in Amritsar for Punjabi community and Tamil community. So that's the brief of what Project Tiger is. And more is in the link. Thanks, Ailesh. Nivas, uh, do you want to continue? So my friend, Zavan will be continuing the remaining part. We, we can't hear you. Uh, one of my uh, one of the coordinators of VVI TV Connect will continue the rest. Uh, hello. Yeah. 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 I will continue now. No problem. Yeah. This is mini media wiki training program. Uh, uh, VVI TV Connect. Uh, uh, Took the support of CIS Setuk and organized a three-day workshop on media wiki training and other aspects of Wikimedia projects. Uh, oh, around 13 participants have involved in this training program. In this training program, we took the mostly the active members of the wiki club who edit Wikidata and Wikipedia mostly. Uh, but this program was not much successful because most of our participants don't know JavaScript as uh, media wiki purely depends on JavaScript and PHP. So well, very few of us know JavaScript and PHP and this was not much successful. Uh, so we were planning to make the, make the same training program, make the same iteration of this training program next year with the, uh, with the students who have uh, proper knowledge in JavaScript and PHP. Uh, user jprakash12345 uh, led the training program and by the end of the participants somehow uh, each one has solved a patch and uh, f1h2o photo walk uh, f1h2o is formula one grand Prix 2018 this was held in amaravati from 16 to 18 november 2018 uh, it is an international motorboat racing uh, which was organized by Union International Mo Motonautic, and in this uh, uh, during this competition, user KC Valaga and Suman six nine nine has discussed with the tourism department of Andhra Pradesh, which is a part of India, and they went for a photo walk there, and we got permission to take the photographs and videos of the participants, and almost sixty images and three videos have been uploaded to the comments as a part of this photo show. Photo walk and one lip one riff session. Uh, it is a iteration. Uh, it has been iterated twice during this past academic year. And first session was conducted on 3rd June 2018 at Annamaya Library, and the second session was conducted on 28 January 2019 at Vega Accounting Solutions in Guntur. Uh, during this session. The member during the first session, members picked up books from library using and fixed citations. 
uh, and during the second se second session eight participants added uh, 158 citations from monadate pages on english wikipedia yo wiki wiki dubbing project uh, this is one of the most interesting thing we have done uh, in the uh, in the past academic year uh, as india comprises of many different languages uh, uh, punjabi is has a user group and you user wiki lover 90 produced an animated video uh, regard which produces awareness about punjabi wikipedia and we like that video and our our mother tongue is telugu so we wanted to translate the same project to telugu language and uh, this project was led by user m navya and the technical support was given by user gnan srikar this happened in three different stages in the first stage we translated the subtitles from english to telugu language and in the second phase we learn the techniques of recording and refining the voice uh, using equipment and software to integrate the video in the third phase we completed the rehearsal and documentation and wiki experience survey uh, as our uh, our club is not a, our, our our club is an extra curricular activity and not a co curriculum activity so we need to uh, we need to have a wiki experience survey as how the editors feeling while they are editing wikipedia and we have created a uh, for google form uh, which comprises of several questions and in this questions we got few answers like Uh, 65 percent of the survey respondents spent less than four hours a week contributing to Wikimedia projects, and rest of them spend more than four hours. And more than 85 percent responded that their collaborative skills highly improved. And 68 percent of respondents were happy to notice a lot of improvement in their skills. 25 percent of the respondents agreed to the statement that participating in Wikimedia projects had a positive effect on them. of 50% of the respondent claimed that they were highly motivated to wikimedia projects and the last one is the one we were proud of because they don't have any more lawyer, any motivation to drop uh, editing wikimedia projects this is awesome thanks so much yeah thank you and oh later we had an english wikipedia training program uh, mm -hmm. uh this is a different one compared to the rather uh, editathon uh, in a general editathon all the participants were sit together and they will be started starting editing uh, where uh, they can get to know about all the details of english wikipedia in a one go but we did not did the, do the same we started something differently and so we planned english wikipedia training program uh, in this training program 16 trainees were uh, trained on various aspects of english wikipedia through several online sessions uh, at the end of the training program eight articles were developed of those five articles were published on the main page of english wikipedia under the session did you know and these were the trainers and yeah these were the trainers user krishna chaitanya user ashlin and user lahiri yanantia and these are the list of dvks that are published on the main page of english wikipedia and these are the users and thematic edit thons uh, we did not plan any thematic edit thon during our annual plan annual plan of the year 2018 and 19 uh, but during while our annual our annual plan was ongoing we found some activities on the uh, dashboard of uh, wiki project india sorry uh, on the dashboard of uh, wiki data india and many other things and we have the indian independence day label a thon on the occasion of 72nd independence day of india uh, we conducted a label a thon and many of the students part from our club participated in it and uh, www2018 edit thon this edit thon was we uh, the full form of www was wiki women for women well being where uh, it was a month long edit thon all the uh, women and men edit the articles related to women in their native in their native language 
then our our students from our club are involved in this project too and hockey world cup editathon in 2018 uh, hockey world cup uh, uh, was conducted in india and uh, where cas ctk uh, odisha wikimedia community and other communities of india collaborated with the government of odisha and started editing the articles of hockey players and we we we, we people from bvit wiki connect uh, we people from bvit wiki connect uh, took the project of editing wiki data items related to hockey during the time and svg translation campaign 2019 india this is this is a campaign that was held uh, on the occasion of uh, international mothers uh, mother language day and this was a month this was also a month long editathon where all the svg images were translated to telugu or native native languages of the users and in this editathon uh, two users uh, uh, have been listed in the top uh, one user was mekala harika she was uh, the topper of uh, she edited uh, more uh, pictures uh, in the entire india and second one is user nagasai sound that is me and i have edited more right pavant we can't hear you pavant we lost audio sorry am i audible now yeah yeah thank you and next one Savant, we can't hear you. Savant? Nivas can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, um we were not able to hear Savant's last words, but um I really want to because we have only a few minutes left um to to give people a chance to ask you questions. Mm, yes, so we'll um uh we'll show you the metrics of 2017 and 18 we'll jump to the uh, maybe you can just share the slides with everyone that would be that could be good oh okay so i'll tell them uh, does what? anyone have any questions for the project in india I don't have a question but I just want to say I'm very impressed by all the incredible work you guys do. It's really inspiring to see such great content being added. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to second that. I I think this is really great work for basically volunteer only, you know, a group. It's a very low budget for a lot of activities and I've I've had the chance to review your annual reports by request of um Krishna so uh, that's when i actually got into the um into all the details of what you've been doing and it's really great so good work um i actually have one question for you if if you can uh do you know how many people how many women participated in the um collaboration you did with uh www <laughs> which was something women for well-being if i or for wellness or something of the sort i think um 
Manavpreet is, is involved in that as well? No, what we did was we did a local on site event. Manavpreet oh. was. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Manavpreet was doing it in Punjab and we were doing it in Andhra Pradesh, so we, which were different states of India. Awesome. So, so how many participated in yours? So how many women not not the general you you want to, in particular the women women participants right yeah i'm just curious if you were able to draw more women to through this activity than usual yes we were able to take like i will tell you how many women participants were there So we have around 10 part, women participants mm -hmm. among 13 people. There were 10 women participants. Oh, that's great. Okay. And, and uh, we were to, actually, sorry. I want to share you something. Uh, when we have conducted a workshop three on Wikidata, uh, there were completely women in the workshop and there is no single man except the trainer in the session. So we have a reverse gender gap in our club. So and yes, we are trying to bridge the gender gap in our sessions as well. So every time when we are alerting coordinators for the next academic year, we are trying to see that 50% of coordinators are gents and 50% coordinators are ladies. Wonderful. That's really great to hear. Yes, um, and yeah. I would like to thank Shani because she helped us in uh, completing the form of Wiki Experience Survey. <laughs> Happily. Um, so I, I want to thank everyone for joining us today and to the two presenters. It was really great learning more about your work. Um, thank you again specifically to Liana for hosting us on Zoom and recording this. Uh, Liana, we well, we can talk later on on how exactly and where to upload it to. Um, yeah, I'll, and, I'll, I'll connect with you offline, Shani. Okay, so thank you everyone. And um, I hope to see you, some of you at least, in Wikimania. And if not, at least uh, either in the working groups or in the next online uh, open meeting, which is going to be in two months' time. Well, maybe not two months because it's going to be Wikimania. But then the month after that, we're going to host another one. Um, so if you want to be hosted in, in, um, in such a way uh, to be one of our featured speakers, just let me know and we can make that happen. Or rather not me, because uh, it, it appears that August is going to be the last month that I am chair of the user group, um, I, as I will be uh, hopefully joining the board of the Wikimedia Foundation. So um, the user group will continue and I'll continue to support it, but I will not be running the actual events. So thank you everyone and uh, wishing you a lovely summer and we'll see you next time. And thank you for all your work for the user group, Shani. I know it's been a lot of work over the last couple of years getting it going and we really appreciate everything you've put in for the, the group. Thanks dear. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Shani, and, and congratulations uh, for your election to the board. Oh, that. thank you. Thank you, Garrett. <laughs> I, I would have voted for you, but I was not one of the voters, but I would have. <laughs> uh, yeah, it still needs to be. I'm, I'm considered now a nominee until August uh, during Wikimania, where, where the board has to vote me uh, in. So until then, I'm still with the user group. And uh, if you have any questions to me, I'm always here. Um, and yeah, thank you for every, thank you for all the work that you're doing online uh, around the world and for sharing it with others. I think this is um, highly important. And um, yeah, again, I want to thank Liana specifically because she knows that she was one of the people who kind of encouraged me when I was just starting out. So. We are uh, trying to continue that tradition in a variety of ways, and it's really heartwarming to see so many people, you know, sharing their thoughts, sharing their experiences, and, you know, working together. So thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next time.
Thank you. Bye-bye.